Hello, so today we're going to be cloning some strawberries. I put out a recent short on it if you want a shorter video, but I've cloned over 200 for one cultivar, and I just want to give you guys a bunch of different ways that I've done it. So you can clip runners straight off the plant since every runner wants to become an entire another strawberry plant and put them straight into water. If they start to droop, just take leaves or trim the existing leaves. I'll show examples of clips on the side. I have reverse osmosis filtered water. That's usually what I use for all my plants. But I'm experimenting with tap water since I believe it will work well as well. If it starts to droop with that, we'll just take some leaves. You can pin them down in your grow media of choice. If you're doing this outside, you could pin them straight into your soil. If you don't want to remove them from the plant, because if you keep them attached to the plant, they stay better hydrated. After about 9 to 12 days, they should be ready to be detached from the mother and have enough roots for 100% transfer or success. Even these after nine to 12 days should have some nice roots on them. Because there's this great article I have from Korea that's a research paper down below that I'll link that they use four different types of grow media. It's 15 pages where they go into detail about how to get 100% success out of regardless of what grow media you use. But generally about 9 to 12 days is how you can get 100% success out of strawberry daughter plants. But I'll link that down below if you want to read into that. So you can make your own grow cubes. I have peat moss and perlite here and pin them down in that. Or rock wool. You might be able to clone strawberries straight from a leaf like I've done with this lemon. But you don't really need to because they are really easy to clone from runner or crown. So you don't really need to use some growth hormone because they already come with a whole bunch of growth hormone naturally, wet, like a gel or aloe vera or something, because that growth node right there already has a bunch of growth hormone on it because it wants to become another plant. Strawberries are really, really good at cloning themselves. So I saved some runners on the strawberry plants downstairs to give examples, but normally I clip them off, all off the plant, like my 16, 10 upstairs or outside because they get really overcrowded and start to waste energy on cloning themselves and not on making more berries. So I let these make some runners just to give you guys some good examples. We pin them down with toothpicks in the rock wool. You can fill the water up all the way because with rock wool you don't have to worry about overwatering or underwatering. There's perfect aeration, which is a perk of rock wool. And they can stay in that rock wool, which has no nutritional value for months. And I've had these in rock wool. These are from the 200 I cloned for about five or five months, about four months. There's a little bit of root rot. I don't take the greatest care of them. This is what's remaining in the pile. I am cracking them, so I'm relying on the roots to go lower for them to come in contact with air. The algae is definitely consuming the oxygen in the roots, so I really should change out the cup. But I've tried to find homes for all of them, and that's just what's lingering of what's remaining. You can leave the runner attached to the plant and just wrap it with some like saran wrap and dirt around the runner. Like this, if you were to, this one was a little bigger, you could put a little baggie of soil there, leave that for about 12 to 15 days and clip that off as well. But even just this, this one's probably a little small, but you could just clip this, put this straight into water, and that usually will root and work as well. And I've actually done one this small but they'll go runner crazy and make tons of them. They go everywhere, so I like to take literally all of them off of the plant. You can take a crown, so strawberries also have four or five, or even up to eight crowns, depending on the cultivar. Sets so these, and they usually have a mother crown, and I can show some better clips of it if this doesn't come out perfect. But you can snap one of those crowns off, and I'll show it in a separate clip, because I don't want to take one of these off, and just throw it right into water or into your grow media of choice. And again, clip leaves if it droops. Throwing it in a humidity dome can help with the hydration of the leaves, which that's why you have to clip them because it has trouble hydrating. So you can put them in any lux, 3,000, 10,000, 30,000, or 60,000. Just know the more lux you put them in, the harder time they may have staying hydrated and the more they may want to droop. But that's not really a factor if you leave them attached to the mother. The natural sunlight is anywhere between 60 and 100,000 lux. We use a lux detector to measure light. The LEDs put out around 80,000 at the tip, 
But as we get further away, around 20 to 30,000, which is good for fruiting and flowering plants or even vegetating or all stages of plants' life. Depending on what cultivar you have, you can have a short day, long day, or a day neutral. Long day want more than 12 hours, short want less than 12 hours to flower, and day neutral don't care. You can put them under the natural sunlight of 60,000 lux, 30,000 lux, or down to 3,000 lux, like in the humidity dome, which is at about 90% humidity. I usually do a 12-12 light schedule for them, regardless of what cultivar they are in this stage, and then when I transfer them, that's where I'll put them into what light schedule they'll remain at. If you're putting them outdoors, outdoors, what just check what time of year you should be planting them outdoors and what zone you're in. All right, so it's the next day. These runners in the cups are doing good. This one feels a little weak, but it's not drooping or anything. This one in the tap water is drooping a little bit, so I'll just take that leaf and that should do better. And then this other one in reverse osmosis filtered water. It looks like it's not drooping or doing well either. This one's really firm. So those will do great. And then the one we have attached to the mother is going to stay there for about 9 to 15 days. And that one looks like it's doing good too. We're just going to try and keep that cup full of water and make sure it doesn't evaporate. So since I'm done with all the runners for this video, I'm not going to keep runners on my strawberry plants anymore. So I'm just going to go through and pick the last few of them and throw them in water just to get more strawberry plants since they're a bunch of free strawberry plants basically. This one, clip it there, clip there, take off the bottom leaf, you can leave that, just like that. And back here, they're just going crazy. You don't gotta really be too gentle with it either. This one's got a long leaf. But anyway, that's probably like five or six more. Let me just throw those in some water and if they droop, take leaves and get some more strawberry plants. Eight, nine, ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. I like to do one per cup so that the roots don't all combine, but for right now, just to keep them moist, they're gonna take a couple days to grow longer roots anyway, so. Well, I'll throw this one in tap water. And this one in tap water. Yay, that's like a whole nother 16 strawberry plant. I put out a separate video on how to grow strawberries indoors hydroponically, despite what cultivar you have, if you're interested in that. I have a list to all the hydroponic gear I use down below. I affiliate for it on Amazon and have grow lights, or coupon codes for grow lights, grow tents, and grow tent kits from Mars Hydro. And I'll link to all that down below. I have my hydroponic plants playlist if you want more or what YouTube thinks is best for you. You can subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.